Welcome back to Orchid House. My name is Olivier in Fort Lauderdale and today I wanted to discuss uh, the Dendrobium genus and uh, the standard care. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but there is no such thing as standard care for Dendrobiums. So, the Dendrobium is a very, very large genus. I think besides Bulbophyllum, uh, that's, I think it's the second largest. And so, there's a variety of uh, situations and so you really need to do some research and uh, I'm going to talk about the sections inside the dendrobium genus because I believe that's really the best way to understand what care your plant will need but before that I just want to mention uh, a few examples to show you how diverse uh, they can be uh, so some of them need an extensive rest it's pretty typical for uh, the dendrobium genus and that means sometimes up to three or four months without a single drop of water but others like the antelope dendrobiums that you see here you water them year-round uh, and there's no rest at all now some of these plants have I mean I would call this a bulb uh, for the the antelope dendrobiums that's a bulb uh, the, the Lindley is a bulb as well but the majority of dendrobiums have canes so they are very thin uh, long bulbs and some of those dendrobiums uh, will only bloom on leafless canes and others will bloom on leafed and leafless canes and uh, some will re-bloom on the same cane for many many years and others will have the cane bloom once and that's it so you need to have new canes growing otherwise you're not going to have any blooms in terms of light uh, the antelope dendrobiums need very high light uh, the calista that's lindley tirsiflorum uh, they need bright light, but nothing uh, out of the ordinary, so not too much light. Uh, temperatures the same way. Uh, some are really hot growers, others uh, grow cold, and others need a serious drop in temperatures at night. So, as you can tell, I mean, it's really endless. The situations are endless, and so you can never uh, approach a dendrobe and say, well, I know what I'm going to do with it. You need to research. Now, to research them, you should research the section uh, the dendrobium belongs to. Now if you think of a genus, uh, I think that an analogy I can think of, the genus would be your extended family with all your cousins, your aunts and uncles, whereas the section, uh, those are your siblings, your brothers and sisters, so they are more closely related. So many genera have usually a, a subdivision in either sections or subgenus and you name it, and in many instances it doesn't really help you much. Uh, Stanopus, for instance, practically all uh, species belong to one single section, so that's not going to help you. Uh, but in the Dendrobium genus that's a really, really valuable piece of information. Now, I'm going to post below the video a link uh, to a website called IOSPE, I believe. Uh, it's in International Orchid Species. The gentleman who maintains the database lives in Key West, Florida. It's quite amazing. Uh, I mean, I don't believe he has all the species on Earth, but it's a quite extensive database. And for the dendrobiums, it will always mention the section they belong to. Now, obviously, once you know the section they belong to, you need to know how the section behaves. Uh, and so if you fall in love with one particular type of orchids, well, once you know how one behaves, all the others are going to behave the same way. Uh, so you need to do further research uh, for that. That's the first time you, you encounter a species, you need to do some research as to how to really care for it. So uh, there's a book uh, called ba by Baker and Baker, and that's a husband and wife team. I believe they are both dead now, uh, but the book is sensational. I mean, it has a, a, an amazing uh, amount of, of species for the Dendrobium genus. And every species has like uh, a cultural sheet. And so the sheet mentions where they grow. Then you have a table that indicates uh, the temperatures in their natural habitat, the variation month by month, uh, how much rain they get month uh, by month when they are supposed to bloom. And then you have cultural tips, uh, how, you, uh, how much light they need, the fertilizing, the watering, and all that good stuff. If you don't want to buy the book, there is a website and I will post again a link uh, to that website where you can buy cultural sheets per species and that's not just for dendrobiums. So the baker and baker had 
a very extensive database for many, many species across so many different genera. And uh, I mean, they are very useful, obviously. I mean, there's some cut and paste in that. Uh, not all of it is uh, super accurate, but in general, I would say it gives you a pretty good uh, amount of information uh, to get going. Now, for us here in South Florida, the most common sections, you have the Calista section, that's Lindley. Uh, there's a video on Lindley. It's one of the most popular of my videos because it's a very popular species. It's extremely spectacular when it blooms, which is only once a year in the spring. And that one, for instance, needs a ex very extensive dry rest. Uh, three or four months without any watering. The light doesn't have to be uh, too big. So you have uh, Jenkinsi, you have Tirsiflorum, you have a bunch of species that are quite popular. And once you know how to care for one, well, once you know they belong to the same section, they will all behave, behave basically the, the same way. Another very popular section here in South Florida is uh, the Spatulata, which we usually refer to as uh, uh, the Antilope Dendrobium. Uh, the reason being that, well, the, these flowers have what looks like an Antilope antler, and uh, they're always uh, gorgeous. Now, while the Calista section is usually uh, people by the species, in the, the spatulata section, uh, there are so many hybrids in existence and they are easier to take care of. They also typically, I will not say they bloom year round, but uh, they bloom a lot. So these, for instance, there's, there's a video on that as well and you, you can refer to that. So these, uh, no rests, a lot of water year round, very high light, uh, intolerance to cold, so temperatures below 55. Uh, Fahrenheit or like something like 13 Celsius, say 15 Celsius. I, I bring them inside, I just don't take chances. So extremely popular, many different uh, hybrids available in the market, all sorts of colors. We have the Laturia, I've never done a, a video uh, on Laturia, but this is an example, little green apple. Again, this is a, a section where you usually find hybrids. And this particular hybrid basically blooms year round. Uh, Sometimes there's a lot of flowers and sometimes less so. Uh, as you can tell, so these are very long canes. There's leaves growing at the tip of the cane. And then the flowers are going to grow in between the leaves, sometimes right underneath it or right at the top, but nowhere else. And these will rebloom uh, many times, so many times over. The same cane can bloom for several years, even several times during the same season. Now, Laturia are easy to take care of, uh, they don't really need a rest, uh, they will uh, take colder temperatures, so that's, that's a very uh, good plan to have. Uh, and then we have the, uh, the dendrobium section within the dendrobium genus, and I'm, I'm less familiar with them, the anosmum, and there's, I refer to a video on anosmum, another very popular species with lots of views. Uh, the anosmum is one of them, uh, you have to be careful, they are colder growers and warmer growers within the group, uh, but those typically need an extensive rest uh, to, to flower properly. And uh, anosmum, for instance, will only bloom once on a cane, so you're going to have to wait for new canes to, uh, to appear uh, for them to rebloom. Now, wherever you live, you may have uh, different sections, you may live in a colder climate, uh, but really, if you want to approach uh, care of a dendrobium species, you really need to focus on the notion of section. Then once you know how a section behaves, well, everything else within that section will uh, behave basically the same way. So that's it. I will, well, maybe a slight cameo. You know I love Calacetums. This is a Cygnocis cooperi, one of my favorite species. It's so beautiful. They are nicknamed the swan orchid for a reason. They are extremely graceful. And uh, yeah, they tend to smell like chocolate. It's a cold day, so you know there's not even the sun out for a change. <laughs> and uh, yeah, beautiful cattleyas. Anyway, so uh, that's it for today. Uh, I wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.